Deep in the heart of West Africa, hidden beneath the soil of Gabon, lies a place where the Earth once ran its own nuclear reactor. It is called Oklo, and scientists found it in the 1950s, but only in 1972 did they realize the truth. 16 separate natural reactor zones, scattered underground. That's right, Oklo isn't just one reactor. It's actually 16 zones spread across different paths underground. But what's strange is that the uranium here is different from anywhere else on Earth. Normally, uranium is found at 0.72%, uranium-235. But at Oklo, it's around 0.7171, a tiny difference that tells a big story. This difference is used by conventional science to suggest that the reactor started nearly 2 billion years ago when uranium had higher enrichment levels. But there's another way to look at it. The traditional explanation says Oklo's uranium was rich enough in uranium-235 long ago that it started a chain reaction moderated by water and ran for hundreds of thousands of years. But the evidence at Oklo doesn't fit the pretty picture that they portray of a steady, self-sustaining reactor. Many of their uranium layers are way too thin to run a natural reaction. And the pattern of uranium-235 depletion is chaotic, varying wildly over microscopic distances, not smooth and uniform like you'd expect from deep time. That's because Oklo wasn't running continuously. It needed an outside kickstart. And here's where things get fascinating. Oklo sits in one of the most lightning-prone regions on Earth, 200 to 300 strikes a year. Lightning produces bursts of gamma rays and a type of radiation called brimstrolum, which can knock loose neutrons and cause brief, subcritical nuclear reactions. Instead of a reactor slowly burning for eons of time, imagine lightning strikes periodically hitting the region, triggering short bursts of fission. The heat would flash away any water, stopping the reaction before it went critical, and the process would happen time and time again. This lightning-driven model explains the sudden spike of temperature, the on and off nature of the reaction, and why the depleted uranium shows extreme, tiny-scale variations. It also explains how 16 separate zones, far apart from one another, with totally different shapes, could all have experienced uranium-235 depletion. Rather than a slow, ancient reactor, Oklo looks like a pulsing, dynamic phenomenon in Earth's recent past, one sparked by the sky itself. 